Elena Botto and I'm a PhD student working at the Peter Mansfield Imaging Centre, um, working on the development of a new neuroimaging system based on quantum sensors. We, we wanted to take the, the work that we're doing in Nottingham to the public. The brain, the human brain creates magnetic fields, but these magnetic fields are very tiny. They're produced by the currents flowing in our brain. We can measure these tiny magnetic fields with very sensitive quantum sensors, which can tell us what the brain is doing by measuring these fields. So the exhibit consisted of different activities. One of them was the quantum box, which represents the quantum sensors, so how they work and how, what's the mechanism inside these sensitive uh, detectors. The brain games was an example of how we can measure uh, brain activity in a very simple way, but that was, um, it was very attractive for the public to be able to play games controlled by your brain. The brain room was possibly the masterpiece of the exhibit. Quite early on, I think we had this idea of the brain room. It was going to be like a projection, I think. So we were, we were interested in doing live brain activity experiments because um, there aren't that many experiments that you can do which show live brain activity, but there is one which works very well and you can do an EEG, which is, you know, um, it's, it's measuring just electric fields from the brain um, on the scalp using electrodes. Um, so it's, it measures the same thing, the like, same underlying signal as, as MEG, same underly underlying generator in the brain, um, but it's, it's a different method of measuring it. So we were thinking like, wouldn't it be so cool to have that and, um, and then project the results somehow um, so that people could see if that was happening right then and there. We eventually came up with something that was going to hang from the ceiling and there was some disagreement as to how to to actually achieve this and what the final result should look like but eventually we kind of hit upon um this idea of a geometric brain like a brain made of triangles polygons always go back to the simplest idea it's kind of what i always do go back go back to the simplest idea and the simplest idea was to make a frame out of wood it then transpired that we were being offered a beautiful room in the Royal Society, a, a, just a perfect miniature classical room with symmetrical windows, doors, fireplace. Uh, and that was quite a gift. And then once we ma made this decision to make this bo polygonal structure, uh, which isn't an, a, an exact replica of a brain, it's an abstraction, it's, a, it's a, a system of mapping the surface of the brain. We decided that we were going to try and demonstrate in a really arty kind of way that there's stuff inside the brain which can be detected from the outside. So the whole idea is we were going to put an EEG system on a person and then we would have their brain waves kind of displayed to them in real time in some fashion. And then we came up with this idea of using uh, colour changing lights like LEDs and we were going to suspend them from the ceiling and it's going to be a small part of the main stand and we were going to devise a solution based on suspending lights like light bulbs in the shape of a brain. We turned it on and I kind of turned around and went, oh that looks really nice. It came out really nicely <laughs> and we had all these, you know, these colours and everyone was so hyped to do it. Everyone was absolutely really excited. I was involved in helping to put the whole thing together in in uh, situ as it were um, which was kind of to be honest it was quite strange because I hadn't been involved at all with making it <laughs> I kind of like just wasn't involved in that bit um, I heard a lot about it as it was progressing and getting there and stuff but I wasn't involved in the actual kind of manufacture of the exhibit really um, so it was quite nice to get there and be part of actually putting it up. Uh, that was really, really, really good. It took us a couple of days. It looked so impressive. Um, and because it was a walk into kind of exhibit, it was like completely immersive as well. It was, I think that was one of the really exciting things about it. You know, it wasn't just like, I mean, we were so lucky to have the stand, but also the extra room that we needed to create the brain room. Um, it was just really, really cool and I thought it looked great. We had a brain 
basically, that you could go inside that really captured people's imaginations, I think. Um, and people kind of came in and were like, oh wow, you know, looking around and, and especially when we were doing the uh, demonstrations as well. And people were honestly like blown away by it. It was quite a simple demo um, of the kinds of things that we can do here, you know, in a much more um, complicated way. Um, but people were still kind of thought it was absolutely brilliant and I thought it was a really good thing to be able to, it gives a, a lasting impression on people and you know they take it away thinking wow that was really cool. Matt approached Lucy about it that they were looking at going to the Royal Society, she was presenting and they're looking at some undergrads going in. Lucy then mentioned it to me and I was like "Ooh, that sounds amazing. We obviously had to do a lot of preparation before going to the exhibit. It was a week-long exhibit you need everything to run 100% smoothly. We had to set it all up um, to test that the LEDs worked and then after we'd done that we hired a van, packed it, take, took down all the brain and then packed like, the brain away with bubble wrap and then like, loaded it into the van and then uh, Matt and Elena drove it down um, with Niall I think <laughs> to the um, exhibit. So we were involved in the construction of our brain room, really cool putting the LED lights together, seeing get how the EEG system worked because obviously we need to know what made it go wrong, things like that, so how much movement we could get away with. And then whilst we were down there, we were actually on the stand pretty much every day, talking to the public, and it was, it was oh. When they suddenly realised, like you could see them understanding what you were talking about, that was really great. Getting to show them the head cast and um, the helmet that they used to scan and they actually got to see it, it was really cool. You just spoke to so many different people and it was an absolute joy to see mainly the children learn something new and be so hungry for the knowledge. They were like, what's this, what's that, what does that do? How does this work? It's been really nice being able to communicate the science we're doing rather than in, a, in just the standard peer-reviewed write a paper get some very critical feedback kind of way. But being able to talk to the public who have absolutely no idea what you do and inspire people uh, in the first place, give them that spark of maybe, hey, this is something I could be a part of in the future. Okay, good. I'm satisfied. Good. <laughs>